what is going on guys this is akira and today we're going to be doing a more advanced topic of aiming now i know i did cover and i did make a guide yesterday on aiming and if you guys haven't seen that then make sure to do so um it's going to be the basics of what you have to learn if you are new to valorant but what i'm going to cover today is going to be a bit more advanced and it's going to be something that you're going to have to learn eventually if you want to get better at the game so uh, i do have my volume all the way down because i usually have it like that when i play but i think i might have it at just a, a low volume because i feel like it'll be too quiet without it all right guys i also want to make an attacking guide and a defending guide so uh, look forward to that if you are into this kind of stuff if you guys want me to cover anything in particular uh maybe a map or maybe a site or uh an operator i'm actually thinking of making agent guides if you all are into that uh let me know in the comments below and i'll i'll try to get up try to get on with that okay so starting with what i said yesterday i know i told you guys about crouching now a lot of people don't crouch in this game and what i mean that by crouch walking nobody crouch walks but crouching can be used to do a couple of things and a lot of them can be effective depending on how you use it so there are a lot of people that like to crouch every time they shoot and this does make your spray a lot easier to handle right so if you notice the spray like this i'm not controlling it but i'm standing it's a lot different than if i crouch it's a lot more compact when i crouch so people tend to shoot and they crouch and this is a very good tactic i actually use this a lot uh, when i do play um but the thing about that is that it is super helpful and you should probably learn to do it by muscle memory but not every time and even i have this problem where i crouch every time i shoot and i'm trying to fight it now but and i'm getting better at fighting it but it just happened you get used to it people just like to just crouch shoot everything right and it's good especially if they're close by and even if they're far i mean a lot of the times if you're super far from somebody and you're having a gunfight with them they'll shoot like this right and if they miss your head they're gonna be like this right so crouching is gonna make it even harder for them to kill you because they're gonna have to bring it all the way down so crouching is very good especially on longer ranges but the thing about this is that whenever you play people that are lower level then it might end up fucking you up and for that reason is that a lot of people at the lower level tend to aim like this i don't know if you, you've ever been in a game of valorant but especially when you're playing unrated you see people walking around like this okay it's weird i don't know why people do it i'm sure 30 40 years of shooting video games have taught people that aiming at the head is always the way to go but apparently i don't know people don't like it so people tend to do this okay so if you're gonna be crouching every time you shoot at someone and this person's aiming like this all you're gonna be doing is crouching into their head i mean into their crosshair so you gotta make sure that you know the people you're playing against okay if you're playing against people of your elo or maybe if your elo is a little bit lower then you might want to avoid the crouch shooting and i learned this the hard way when i play unrated i tend not to crouch shoot because i feel like everyone's just aiming like that and i'll kill the people that are pretty good because they're just constantly head level but the people that are you know kind of bad i'll just be crouching right into their crosshair so make sure that you do learn this trick and you do have it set in your muscle memory but just make sure that you kind of know when to use it you gotta know the people you're playing against before you can you can start doing this right but it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty bad if you maybe start using that too much okay i actually made a list today so it's gonna be a bit more organized okay so yesterday i showed you guys how to peek stuff right what am i doing all right so yesterday i showed you all how to peek stuff i showed you all that it's always better to pick your angles instead of it's always better to do this rather than go like this because you're gonna have to readjust okay so getting more or more in depth with that every time i take a site no matter what it is or if i'm defending and i'm trying to clear something i will never do this anymore okay that's not good because the last thing you want to do is readjust the whole point of aiming down sites and trying to to get a kill by clearing something is to adjust as little as possible so if you're clearing something and you're going like this unless they're standing still and they're not looking at you or they're slow on the shot and you can kill them before they can react to you you're almost always gonna have to adjust always and i'm sure a lot of you are gonna be pretty good at it but you don't want to adjust that's the point you want your crosshair placement to be so good that the adjustments you make are going to be minor okay this whole this circle right here that should be as close as an adjustment as you have to make and and that's why the best way to peek stuff 
is to pick your angles before you pick them so kind of like the pie thing i showed you all yesterday what i do when i pick something is i'll pick this section of the pie right and then i don't see anyone there so now i am over here and i pick that section and i see someone and i can kill them if i don't see anyone here anymore i move it to the left and i pick someone over here and then there if i see someone then i can adjust you see but i don't always have to adjust if you're peeking this old way of keeping your crosshair on this you're always gonna have to adjust almost always unless they're not looking or unless they're slow but odds are you're gonna have to adjust and the last thing you want to do is peek a corner like this okay don't peek corner slow especially if they know you're there if somebody knows that you're in a spot and you're peeking like this then you're, you're gonna get killed okay they're gonna see you before you see them or or that's when ping gets involved okay and it's not gonna be in your favor if somebody knows you're here and they're aiming down see it's this guy this guy knows i'm here right you have options you can either do this jiggle peek right and if he shoots at you then you just don't repeat or you can go wide and this dude's gonna be aiming like this right he's gonna be looking at you and if you go wide he's gonna have to adjust to you why you should have your crosshair already on his head so all you gotta do is do that but this dude is gonna have to do this so not only does he have to hit the shot, but he has to control his spray and he has to do all that good shit. So make sure that you're just picking the angles before you peek it and don't keep your crosshair on the corner. Okay, that's not a good idea. Especially if you think someone's there, okay? <laughs> if you're gonna if you're freely checking something and you don't think anyone's there, then okay, it might work. But but just make sure that, you know, if you if you think somebody's there, make sure you pick an angle before you before you pick it. I mean before you peek it. Okay, that being said. Speaking about peeking the best way to peek something is at a distance so this is the last thing you want to do if you peek in a corner don't do this okay because people will see your shoulder before you see them your camera is in the middle of your face or around your neck to avoid head glitching so if you're peeking like this this dude is gonna be able to see my shoulder he can probably see half of my body and what can I see a fucking leg okay that's the way it works peeking from a distance is always better so if you do want to peek something, make sure you peek it as far from the angle as you possibly can. That way this dude will see less of you and he'll see less of you faster. Okay, because if you if you peek like this, then they're going to see you before you can even react, okay? But there are going to be times where you're going to be in that position, okay? And you can't do a thing about it. You have to peek it that way. So this is when you white peek. You never slow peek if you're this close to an angle. Never. What you want to do is you just want to white peek. Every time. Doesn't matter if I don't care if they expect it. I don't care if they know you're gonna white peek because they probably do know you're gonna white peek. There's no way you can slow peek that. You gotta do it and you, you gotta win the aim battle. Okay. Some gunfights, as much as you try to out position your enemies, there are some gunfights that you're just gonna have to out aim people, okay? And that's what the guys are for to help you out, boys. As much as possible. So like I said, far angles as much as you can. And if you do have to take an angle this close, then you you white peek that bitch. <clears throat> All right, moving on. Okay. So. Something that I had a hard time learning. And thankfully, I played CSGO for a little while. Not a lot, but enough to learn that shooting through things is very much a thing on Valorant, okay? Now, I have so much fucking trouble, okay? Sometimes I'm, I'm holding tight angles, and in Siege, a lot of the times, whenever you're holding a tight angle, you can't shoot through those walls around the angle you're holding. A lot of the time. Sometimes you can. So if I miss it, the shot while they walk by, I give up, I relocate, or whatever. But in this game, there's actually bullet penetration. A good amount, too. Kind of weird, see? Like, almost every corner in Valorant, you can shoot through. Okay. You can't shoot through every wall, but you can shoot through almost every single corner in the game. And this is for a reason. And I don't know if you guys know this, but a very good way of knowing if you can shoot through something is the spray that you get or the little color. So you see me shooting this, this wall, this orange spray is showing me, you see the little orange crack on it? That's showing me that I can't shoot through it. If you see that, like these orange sparks, then you can shoot through that wall. If you see this, however, these black holes, then you are shooting through it that's how you know if something's wall bangable but you also want to take into account uh, the weapon you're using 
like if you go to ascent for example on ascend if you're on b and you're facing b main there's a wall that can only be shot through from an op a revolver or uh, an odin i believe and a guardian should be able to do it also after the next um, update but but yeah that's how you know okay wall bangable wall bangable too that's weird Dude, you can shoot through everything. Holy shit. Okay, but not wall bang. Oh, dude. Oh my lord. Not wall bangable. See, that's that's a good wall bangable. Not wall bangable. Okay. I'll tell you now. So if you're holding a tight angle like this, right? Say you're holding a tight angle like this. Pretend that there's a wall here. Okay. So you're only holding this tiny ass angle. Actually, I should do it like this. It'd be a little bit easier. No. Yeah. Okay. No. Whatever. Say you're holding a very tight angle, and somebody. Just whizzes by like this, right? So you're aiming right here, and somebody right here starts walking and they walk this way, and you miss the shot. You can try wall banging because it's very effective. Like it's crazy how effective wall banging is, right? Look at that. Especially if you play Vandal, like it's insane. Like it's crazy. That's actually crazy. And sometimes when you're holding angles and you see people shoot at you, right? And you, like you hold an angle and somebody pre fires your angle, right? And you don't die, but you take damage. You can sometimes just go like that like like if, if you know you're gonna back out because they're shooting at you shoot and back up just, but i mean there's no reason not to shoot because on the way out you might catch them through the wall and you know no no that's a lot of jank bro okay a lot of jank in this game but there's some obviously some guns that do better at uh penetration than others right and there's some guns that are just not that good like the phantom can do it too but the phantom takes a little bit more shots you know it's kind of weird depends what gun you're using but yes most things are wall bangable corners that is not every wall there's a lot of walls that are wall, wall bangable but most corners are in the game and that's for gameplay purposes okay so uh moving on okay a big part of the game that took me forever to understand the rule of valorant is to stop and shoot like CSGO, right? Everyone knows, don't shoot and walk, it's a bad thing, you're gonna fucking spray everywhere. But there are some guns where, especially if you're attacking, it's okay to shoot and walk, depending on how far you are. Like the Spectre. The Spectre is not bad if you walk and shoot. But you see how after I get after a certain distance, it gets very inconsistent. Very hard for me to kill the person in front of me. But like, say if you're attacking and somebody is, say you're attacking, right? And you think someone's behind this corner, you don't have to do this, right? You don't always have to do that. If you know someone's around the corner, and especially if they're hiding in one of those one and done spots where they're just in one corner and they can't escape without you watching them escape. So they're stuck in that corner and you know they're there. Let's fucking peek that bitch. Like, don't even worry about it. At this point, they would have to hit a crazy ass shot as you're peeking out and they would have to hit it fast and like they're fucking dead, okay? Like you peek that shit fast, but the Spectre can do this. This isn't too bad with the whatever this thing is, I forgot what it's called. I would hate it. I, I don't I don't use the gun, the stinger. And you can also do this with pistols. But with like on pistol round, it is better to stand still, obviously. You're gonna be way more accurate if you stand still. But if someone's shooting at you and you just like this. Okay, it's gonna be a free headshot so even though i wouldn't advise you you know fucking haha -ha, like fucking spraying and shit like you can actually move and be somewhat accurate it's not gonna be the most accurate but if someone's nailing you and they're fucking bodying you and you're hitting you taking like five classic shots to the fucking you know <laughs> chest then yeah move around fuck it like and the closer you are the more effective it is obviously uh you, you don't want to do this from super far but but yes, uh, that is something you have to learn. Also, if you didn't know, I know a lot of you are classic people, especially if you're a sage main, because you can't afford ghost if you want to buy a wall and all that good shit. The triple tap on this thing is insane, okay? If you're going to be playing fast and close, you don't even have to buy a ghost, to be honest, because you can just shit on people with this thing, okay? This thing is super accurate. Even from a distance, like, you can kind of, like, like shit on people close by and if they don't buy armor dude this, this thing is fucking done the one and done with this thing 
But what a lot of people don't know is just how fucking accurate this thing is while jumping. This thing is actually insane. Like, it's super accurate. I don't know why it's so accurate. I don't know what Riot was thinking, but it's it's way too good for its own good. And what's cool about this is if you're holding like a site, so there's some bomb sites, like say if you take Haven uh, A, A site, there's some boxes in the middle, right? So what a lot of people do is if they're holding these boxes, pretend this is a box, I know it's too tall, but a lot of the time they'll do this, right? And they'll keep an eye on long or they'll keep an eye on short over here and try to see if they can see people coming. But if you have a classic, especially during pistol round, you can actually just peek over the box like that. So you can just be walking and instead of peeking your entire body, you can just jump peek and see, like look down long. Okay. And the, the chances of you getting headshot while jump peeking is very low because you jump really fast. And as long as you don't do it super quick every time, like if, if you don't do it too often, they won't catch on. Okay. If you jump peek like three times in a row, then eventually one guy's going to catch on and he's going to headshot you. But you get jump peek, right? And if you do jump peek and you do happen to see somebody coming at you, especially on pistol round, if you're holding a site on pistol round, odds are it's only two or three of you, three of you max on that site. And you're going to have to wait for your teams to rotate. So you have an option. You have options to hide and stay alive as long as possible for your team to retake with you. Or you try to take someone out. If you can take out one, maybe two people, then you make it a lot easier for the rest of your team to retake the site. Okay. So if you do end up trying to jump peek over a box. With this classic, you can even do damage. Okay. So you can jump peek and if you see someone, you can jump peek again and just, you know. And it doesn't do a lot of damage, especially if they're far, but if they're close and you see their head over a box, like you can chill on these dudes. Like it's insane. Like it, it's actually super good. So not only is jumping a good way of being able to like look around and see what's ahead of you without having to peek your entire body, but you might actually get some damage off or maybe even a kill if they're close enough or if they're hurt, but it's, it's crazy. Like don't, don't sleep on the, on the classic for this reason. Also, whenever you're holding angles with the classic, sometimes like if you're behind people and you catch up on them and the last thing you want to do with the classic <laughs> on pistol rod is come up people and just be like, ah, and even with armor, I think this thing takes two shots, right? But yeah. Okay. I was like, bro, what? I was smacking all these dudes. But yeah, like if people buy armor, any type of armor, it'll take two shots almost every time. So if you, say you're behind three people, like that's the last thing you want to do is like, you know, having to shoot six shots in total to kill three people, right? So what you could do is if you're holding a corner like that, you can just peek, right? And that's kind of the optimal thing to do is if you want to kill, if you want to kill someone fast, that is, right? It's just, it's a lot more effective than doing this because the classic is very inaccurate um, when it comes to aiming. But if you, if you do come up behind people, you can also just like say these three dudes, right? This this dude, this dude, and this dude are on A site. And I come up behind them because I flank or I hide in the corner or something. Instead of having a boom, 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 you can just tap, 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 and that's it. You get me? Like, you got to explore the options. So don't sleep on the classic. If, if you are mainly a ghost user, make sure that you do try that out because that's a big part of aiming. And a big part of aiming is learning the guns that you're using, obviously. So next, we're going to get into sidestepping. And counter strafing so counter strafing is very important in a game like valorant and csgo because counter strafing is a way to add mobility to your usual static movement okay so a lot of the times when you shoot of course you have to stand still because that's going to be the the most obvious thing to do to stay accurate but if you counter strafe you can actually add movement and still stay somewhat accurate so what counter strafing is, is whenever you're walking, say you're walking towards the left, you press the right and it immediately stops your character. So the way Valorant used to work during the beta is if you were walking like that and you would just let go of the walking button, you would slow down fast enough for you to be accurate right away. See? It, takes, it takes a little while to get, but the accuracy comes. Now this used to be a lot faster. You used to slow down a lot faster so you would become accurate a lot faster but they changed it so they made it more like csgo now csgo you have to counter strafe you have to do it because if not you're going to be inaccurate for too long and odds are by the time you start aiming accurately you're going to be dead so in valorant 
what you want to do is if you're walking in a direction and you see someone you want to immediately press the opposite direction because this stops your character a lot faster so instead of doing this you can do this see how faster that is this compared to this so you want to make sure that you get into the habit of that and i had a lot of trouble doing that but i think i finally got it down where i can kind of just counter strafe whenever i want to and it is muscle memory especially if you're not used to playing csgo and trust me i'm not a csgo person so i had to learn this from scratch instead of the people who took years to learn this shit on csgo right so counter strafing is probably the most advanced thing that you have to learn on valorant but it is what's gonna make your <clears throat> it is what's gonna make your your gameplay go to the next level okay so counter strafing also works with i think it's called sidestepping i'm not sure what the correct term for this is but you can like i said yesterday you can jiggle peek shit like this right but you can also half step i think it's half step or when you peek something you can kind of just like it's kind of like jiggle peeking but it's to cover more more area so okay that was a pretty bad example all right so say i'm peeking this shit right and instead of doing this to get info you can do this okay so you go around the corner but you stop every few milliseconds just in case somebody happens to peek you or just in case you happen to see somebody so the reason for that is just in case for any scenario that you do see somebody then you are ready to shoot if you do peek like this then you might not be ready and you would have to kind of shape and then adjust and do that but if you do it with the half steps you can peek no one peek no one see someone right shoot you peek again no one no one no one no one so every step that you take is just in case you see somebody pretty much it, it kind of makes okay, so you have to be standing still to get to hit accurate shots and peeking this way with little side steps make sure that you're standing still for a good portion of the time okay so that's, that's pretty much what that is it's just meant to keep you standing still for a good amount of time also you can actually stay quiet while doing this because it takes about two steps before you actually make noise while walking i don't know if you can hear it but let me let me fix the audio for that it's a pretty good step for that because your walking animation is okay let's watch you hear it? you see the space that space before the sound comes out you can move all that before you actually make a sound so you don't always have to slow walk like instead of having to peek something while slow walking like this you can just sidestep it you see how i'm not making any noise I'm peeking it fast, I'm peeking it efficiently, and I'm peeking it quietly. So that's very important, and that's something that you definitely want to learn. Um, I just learned this like a few months ago, maybe like a month ago, and a month and a half ago, and I'm barely adding it to my gameplay. But uh, it's something very important, and uh, it's something that's gonna save you a lot of the times, especially if you're hiding in a corner and you know people are peeking you. Because this is very good whenever you know someone's coming for you. So if, if say there's a raise right here, right? And I'm right here and I know she's coming for me and she knows that I'm there. I know that she's there. Instead of having to be like, oh, like what do I do? Like, or white swinging and having to guess where she is. I could just might peek it. And eventually I'll find her and she won't hear me peeking also, which is very important. So there's that. Okay, uh, moving on. Okay, so. <clears throat> Like I said before, the Spectre pistols, you don't always have to be completely still to be able to shoot those. But there's also times where you're going to be in very, very particular situations with your rifle where you are going to be better off moving, okay? Like if, say this dude is here and he knows that I'm here and we're right around a box or something. Sometimes just shooting and walking is the best if you're, if you're that close to them, okay? Barrel stuffing somebody means that you can be... <laughs> as fucking look look let me look at this if you're that close to people and you know that they're there and you have to push them just fucking walk up to them and shoot them okay just know that you have to be really close to people but don't underestimate the barrel stuff okay <laughs> because i mean the barrel stuff is fucking good even though your shots fly around everywhere if you're that close to somebody your shots are all gonna hit them okay it doesn't matter how they fly around you're, you're literally on someone's fucking dick right so sometimes and i don't always do this but a lot of the times if I come up behind people and say I'm up behind these three dudes, I know I can like aim this correctly, right? Like I can 
I could probably bop them like that, but there is a slight chance that I might miss it. So what I do is that I'll come up behind them, say it's this dude, this dude, and this dude. I come up behind them and I'll just like, you know, I'll make sure that I barrel stuff one guy to at least guarantee a kill. If they're moving, that is, okay? Because it is harder to move. Oh, it is harder to shoot people when they're moving. So if you're behind people and they're like all moving around or slow walking, you don't want to miss the shot or, or whiff a little bit because they're moving. So instead you just, you try to barrel stuff one and then you move on to whatever you take and i mean you don't always have to do that but that that is an option that you can do okay that is something that's there so don't forget to barrel stuff and now we're going to be going to the last thing now headshots in valorant are key they are the god tier thing to do if you want to win most of your games but you also have to think about uh comms so your team's comms are very important and i'm i'm telling you this with a grain of salt okay this isn't always the way it is but you have to make sure that you trust the team that you're playing with and that you know that they're being as accurate as possible with their descriptions. So even though you always aim at head level, okay, there are a few occasions where you don't have to aim at head level. First one being the op. It's really hard for me to get used to this because even with the op, I tend to aim at head level. And the problem with that is it, look, it makes it a lot harder to hit these shots, okay? If you have the op, you always aim center mass. Always, always, always. It's hard to discipline yourself to aim for the head. It's even harder to discipline yourself to aim for the body once you already learn how to aim for the head all the time, okay? So I'm constantly like this at head level. So whenever I use an op, it is so hard for me to aim at center mass because it feels so against everything I've learned in the past few months, okay? I think that's super hard. So that is one reason that you aim for the center mass. Second reason is when people tell you that somebody's hurt. If there's one dude left on the other team and you guys are hunting for him and someone tells you, oh, the brimstone is lit 144, okay? 144. One shot would kill that brimstone to the chest, okay? So there is no reason to aim for the head and lower your chances of hitting the shot when you could just aim for the body and just insta-kill him if he really is that hurt, okay? But there are some problems with this also. If that brimstone isn't the last one alive, and you aim for the chest you can get peaked by somebody who's full health and they'll kill you because they were aiming for the head so it is very situational and you do have to use your good judgment to know when to do it but say for example brimstone is lit 144 and you know he's stuck in this corner then when you peek him yeah fuck yeah aim for the body like simple right if you know that they're there and you know he's there and he's hurt then you aim for the body if you don't know exactly where he is, but you know that he's hurt, but there are more people around, more enemies, then you aim for the head all the time because you don't know who's peeking you. Okay, if you're trying to kill uh, Brimstone and you're aiming for the body and fucking Omen peeks you and headshots you and you lose the gun battle because you were not aiming for the head, then you're going to kick yourself in the ass for it. So use your judgment and if you know that he's there and he's hurt, just don't be afraid to aim for the body because it's going to get you the kill faster the body is bigger than the head obviously so you're going to be more likely to hit your shots okay guys but that is my second more advanced guide uh, i am going to be doing a defending guide and an attacking guide and i also want to do uh, a guide for agents so also uh so make sure you let me know on that guys uh let me know in the comments what y'all think about this like guide series for valorant uh, if y'all want me to cover anything also let me know down in the comments below <clears throat> I have been trying to upload a lot more recently. I'm going to start uploading maybe four times a week if I can. I'm going to try to, but, uh, you know, it is hard. I do have a few weeks off from work because somebody had COVID, so I'm going to be chilling on my house, uh, you know, just trying to make sure that I don't get it uh, <laughs> as much as I can, right? Even though I go to the gym, but, you know, it is what it is. So uh, let me know what y'all think in the comments below. I am also going to post a 40 kill game probably tomorrow. Uh, so make sure y'all stay in tune for that. Uh, I think it was 44 kills, which is my personal highest at the moment. Uh, so yeah, guys, this has been the cure. Hope y'all enjoyed the guide. Let me know what y'all think in the comments, and I will see you all in the next one, guys. Take it easy.